So about five years ago there was a big earthquake that occurred in the Kaikoura region and it affected a several thousand square kilometres of this area. One of the big impacts of that earthquake was the landslides. Over 29,000 landslides were mapped by us and our team that were caused by that earthquake. Some of those landslides are relatively small, just a few rocks that fell from a slope. Some of them are big, and this is one of the biggest ones that was generated by the earthquake. This is called the leader landslide. So the leader landslide is in the order of about 10 million cubic meters in volume. Um, the mass moved from the, the top up there. So where we're standing now used to be all the way up there. And you can see from the helicopter in the background, the scale of this, of this landslide. The landslide came down and it actually blocked the leader river, which is down below us and the dam formed. And over the next few months after the earthquake, the water level in the lake behind the dam started to rise. And eventually in several big rainstorms after the earthquake, the dam breached and washed out a whole load of material from below the, the landslide. So the, the earthquake didn't just cause big landslides. It also caused a lot of cracking. And so what happens because the, the landscape is now cracked, it means it's more vulnerable to future rain events. The water gets into the cracks, it loosens the material and it fails. So one of the things that we're doing as part of our investigation into the impact of the landslides is we have to understand how these landslides formed. And this landslide is really interesting, the leader landslide, because it forms on the junction of two main faults. And these are geological faults that ruptured to the surface during the earthquake. The purpose of what we're doing here is we're trying to uh, characterise the materials that form the landslide so that we can understand the different geological materials that are in the landslide and we can sample the slide surface. So this material that we're standing on, this 10 million cubic metres, moved along a surface that's several centimetres thick. Can you, that's pretty impressive that an entire mountain can move on these little thin layers and that's the purpose of our drilling. The reason we're trying to get the slide surface is so that we can then take that material in its core as a sample and we can put it into the laboratory and we can test it and it gives us the strength of the material. And what we're doing then is we're numerically simulating the earthquake as it happened to try to understand what processes caused the lands landslide to occur here. So when we have this information, we can combine it with other information from past earthquakes in New Zealand and internationally. We can then use that knowledge to try to forecast where else in New Zealand similar conditions may occur and where we may have the potential to cause damage to people, property, pipelines, roads, you know, the infrastructure that's really quite critical. So what we're going to do next is we're going to show you how we actually investigate the landslide. Oh, well, on the, the actual... Um driller on there so I actually operate the machine and stuff like that. I've been in this um, game for a very long time and travel all around the world. Obviously the setup and all that's the main part to drilling your hole and stuff like that. Because if you don't get that part right, the ref it's not going to go right for you either. So um, quite a lot quite often um, hard solid rock, soft stuff won't follow it up so you've got to stop and then restart. But if you can actually get the um, drill running quite smoothly and stuff like that you can actually go through um, clays and rock and pick the whole lot up in one hit. Hey, uh, my name is James Chapman, I'm a drilling contractor. We're doing a, a series of holes through this to try and understand the slide plane or how the surface failed. It's quite a unique drill rig, it's a, it's a heli portable machine and it fits together like a, a rather large Meccano set. You can fly this thing into the bush pretty much anywhere, assemble it. Um, without roads or transport and, and go to work. So the landslide is, is around about 50 metres to the slide plane. So, so as far as diamond drill holes goes, these are quite shallow. So we're drilling using a, a method called wireline diamond core. And we're using one of these puppies, which cuts a, a, a rather large round hole. Uh, this spins, we cut the hole and we retrieve the material that's, that, that we cut over the top and it comes up the inner tube. We, we kind of find working with scientists they're a bit more intense and, and a bit more onto what's happening. So it, it's pretty cool seeing these guys really fascinated looking at the core that's coming out of the ground. So, you know, they're, they're wrapped to see the material and we're wrapped to get it out of the ground. So. And what we do is those samples come out of the ground and we clean them up and photograph them and while they're nice and fresh. So here's an example of one of these, these core boxes. Um, this is from about 74 metres deep. In the from the leader landslide borehole, um, 
And what you can see here is just nicely wrapped. Uh, this is a, an example of the, the siltstone. Um, and this particular piece is from the intact ground beneath the landslide. Um, you can see it's a nice consistent piece of core. There's only a single fracture in there. Um, if we were to look at some of the material from within the landslide itself, it would be very broken up. There's lots of fractures, lots of clay um, and veining in there. For the moment, they're just going to stay stacked on site here. Um, and then in a few weeks time, we will take them down into a big shed where we'll open them up and we'll make detailed logs of the material in the, in the core. And then uh, others are going to come along after that and they're going to sample the interesting bits and do some tests on them to get some more information. So this, this work um, is going to be combined with uh, the geophysical survey um, and what we can do from there is build models um, of these landslides that give us a really good idea of how these things work mechanically um, and how these materials fail in response to an earthquake. They then run a series of tools down the hole which are the logging tools running behind me and they're quite, quite technical as to what data they recover. So that assists these guys trying to understand why these landslides occur, why they fail and how they fail. So geophysics is uh, essentially measuring the physical properties of the rock remotely. So I can measure those properties with instruments from the surface. But what I really want to do is get into the rock through a borehole and see them in situ. So the drilling is designed to get our hands on the rock and we get a chance to look down into the hole by running these instruments. Density, how, how, how much a rock weighs, that tells us a little bit about what type of rock it is and what's happened to that rock. The other physical property that we look at is, is how seismic waves propagate through them. So how will this hill respond if another earthquake happens? So all this information is coming together in essentially a, a, a whole picture of what this hill looked like before what it looked like during it was sliding, and what it looks like now. There are a lot of landslides that came down during the Kaikoura earthquake, far more than we could possibly uh, measure. Uh, so we looked at a few of them in detail, and the idea is we chose a nice cross-section of ones, different rock types, different hillsides, different sizes, and we then have a catalogue that we can then compare other ones to. This is the Stanton landslide. This head scarp up here is where you know the original line of the land was up near the pine trees, and all that has come down. This hole is about 60 metres deep. The key thing is we drilled through the landslide, and then we penetrated through the zone of the slide plane, which we believe the rocks moved along when they came down the hill and we get below that so we're into what we call country rock or intact rock below the landslide. Prior to the drilling we did some ground geophysical surveys on, this, on the landslide where we laid out cables on the ground as a, a type of electrical survey where we inject electric current into the ground and then we measure the voltage and the resultant is a resistivity which is a physical property of the earth. The bright red colours are high resistivity, the greens at the bottom are rocks that are much more conductive, so they conduct electricity really well. And it's the contrast, the boundaries between these rock types that we're interested in from the point of view of mapping the landslide. Now we get an idea of its complexity. So this would be the landslide material and this would be the native material beneath the landslide. Alright, so we're, the drill rig is sitting on our line at about this location. Um, from our geophysical modelling, we really don't know accurately how deep these boundaries really are. So by drilling a hole down through this to about 60 metres, we can then tag each of those boundaries with the drilling. What's really important is that we cover the full depth range, so we understand where the big boundaries are, but also that we get the detail from the borehole that we can't see in the geophysics. By bringing all of these different pieces of the puzzle together, it's the only way we can really understand why this landslide occurred where it did. By investigating these landslides, we can then understand how, what caused them, why they are here, and we can take that into other locations in the future to try to forecast where they, they could occur.